Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at an actual application of transfer learning. We're going to use a neural network that is capable of recognizing facial features, locations of the eyes, mouth, nose, and use that to help properly center and crop a picture so that it's going to be good for style gain. So you've seen StyleGAN, where we're able to take a random number sequence and generate any number of images, faces, from that just by generating new random number sequences. You can also get the right sequence of numbers that matches a real-life image. And what you can do then is get two real-life images, get two random sequences. It's not random anymore at that point. We're engineering it for that picture and transist between the two. We're going to see how to do this. But now to get a image to be a GAN, you have to crop and center that image exactly like StyleGAN does. If you look at a bunch of StyleGAN images as it's cycling through, you'll notice that the eyes are always in the same location. That's no accident. When NVIDIA was building the FFHQ data set that this was trained on, they cropped according to the eyes. So we need to do something very, very similar because the distance between your eyes lets you know how big, on average, that image actually is. So you can expand it so that the sizes of the heads are pretty consistent. And then you also use the eyes to center it appropriately. And we'll see how to do all of this. I'm going to go ahead and open this in Colab so that I can actually run it. All right, we're in Colab. So what we're going to do is first you're going to run this block of code. This block of code says that we're using the FFHQ pre-trained network from StyleGAN2. Now, I'm not using the latest StyleGAN3 because StyleGAN3 changed something to with the way that these vectors are represented, so it doesn't do as good of a job as StyleGAN2 at representing real-world images in a feature vector. I have a link in this a little bit further down that shows the actual issue that's been raised for that. So we're going to do 150 steps. That's how many images we want between the two images that we upload, the starting image and the ending image, and then how many frames per second we're going, and then freezing steps that is just how many images you want at the beginning, at the end, so that it's not just jumping right into a sequence, a, a transition. It's an optional feature. You can set that to zero if you want to just jump right into it. So we're going to upload the starting and ending images. I put the code here that accomplishes this in Colab. You can upload really any image that you want, so long as there's, there's a face that it can recognize. And you don't want more than one face, or you'll get an error. Here, I am uploading an image of me. You'll see it in a moment. You want to choose your ending image. I am uploading one of the Avengers, Thor. Maybe my alter ego, who knows. So then you upload Thor, and he's there. You also need to install some software. We're going to install the five facial landmarks predictor. What it is able to do is kind of give you the base of the mouth. We won't really or the base of the nose, I believe, just above the mouth, and then the corners of each of the eyes. So there's two for each eye, and then the mouth, so that's that's five features that it detects. And we're doing this all through the DLib Python library. We also need to install StyleGAN2. We are using PyTorch for this. We don't need to install PyTorch. That's automatically in Google Colab. And now we're going to use the DLib package and the pre-trained neural network that is provided here that recognizes those five facial features. So we're transferring that in. It's not pure transfer learning in the sense that we're adding some layers onto it, but we're using these weights and that completed neural network to get us an intermediate step so that we can crop appropriately. And we'll see how that works in a moment. This is the code that basically gets you the predictor that you're going to make use of. And we'll start by looking at the source image. So what I'm doing here is seeing if we can detect facial features. If, if it can't load the image, we uploaded it incorrectly. 
And if it doesn't detect any rectangles, then there are no faces detected. If you put a picture of your dog in there, it's not, it's not going to work, usually. And then we get, the, we get the predictors. And we also get the width, how wide the... We're scaling down how wide the image is. Then we loop over these five. We get the point one and point two out of there. Now they're sh so that we can get the... Uh, the, the, two, the two points of the rectangle. And we're printing out all of them here. So you've got the, the eyes and the base of the, of the nose. And here's what it looks like, on me anyway. You can see it's found the two corners of my eyes on each side, and it's found the, the nose. So this is, these are the five that you're seeing up here. We're going to use those to crop because I can get the distance between the two eyes, and that tells me about how big the face actually is in here. So that lets me zoom in on it. Is the, the space between eyes within, within, I would say, maybe a centimeter at most, is pretty similar among human beings. So that's a good way to, to zoom it consistently, and then we just center on on those eyes. There's a standard X and Y location that most of StyleGAN was cropped to, and I just I just loaded a StyleGAN generated image and found the X and Y in Photoshop. So that's what I have there. You'll see that in a moment. So I created a function called find eyes. It basically gets feature two and zero, which are the, the, the two corners of the two eyes. And then we're going to crop it. We, we determine the aspect ratio, and we also get the distance between the two eyes. We get the aspect ratio so that it may, can, remains consistent. We don't want to stretch the image because then the face will either look really fat or really thin. And we resize it appropriately. And we also adjust these two numbers that I got here. I used Photoshop and basically reverse engineered those two numbers manually out of a StyleGAN generated image because the, the eyes are usually in consistent locations on StyleGAN images and I just needed to determine what those two locations were. Now I'm going to convert the source and the target. We also have to convert it back from blue, green, red, because internally the neural network that we're using for these facial features is not dealing with, uh, uh, with RGB like we, like we might expect. And we write out the cropped source and target. So here are me and Thor. You can see how consistent the cropping is. Our eyes are in the same location. Our faces are zoomed really rel relatively close. So we're trying to get at least the space between the eyes to be consistent through zooming. I think Thor has a bigger, pretty much his entire stature is bigger than me. So that is, uh, that is not to be not expected. So now we're going to convert the source and the target into, into a feature vector. And that's what we're using this projector.py. Now the latest StyleGAN 3 doesn't even come with a projector.py. So it's, they, they made some changes in StyleGAN 3 that just doesn't do this quite as well. We go through all of the training steps, all the way up to a thousand. We do the same thing for the target image, the Thor. And there you can see me. That's my Gan doppelganger. Uh, he doesn't look exactly like me. He looks a little creepier than me, I think. Uh, you can see even the books. The whimsical kind of style Gan background becomes similar to the background that you're looking at in, in the image. Similar thing for Thor. He also looks a little, little different, but close, close. And then we build the video. We're building the video basically just by getting the two latent vectors. And then we're going to basically mathematically go through all of the steps and slowly just transist from one to, to the other. And it generates it, and then you're able to download the video. And you can see the video here, what it, what it actually looks like. It does a transition from from me into Thor. So this is a good example of how you can use an off-the-shelf neural network to help with cropping. This could be very useful even if you're not using StyleGAN, just if you want very consistent cropping across a large number of images. This would be a great automation script. Thank you for watching this video, and if you want to follow along with the rest of this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.